Alright, welcome to today's video everyone. So in the previous few videos we've been looking at the modulus argument form of a complex number. So you might ask yourself, well what's the purpose of having this mod arg form? We had a perfectly fine uh, expression for a complex number in terms of its Cartesian uh, expression, so z equals x plus iy. Why do we need this uh, mod arg form? Well it turns out that mod arg form is very helpful in doing certain things with complex numbers. So one such thing that it's helpful with is determining products and quotients of complex numbers. And so in this video, I'm just going to be proving these two results here for you, and we will get some nice results that follow from some of these formulas. Okay, so to start off the proof, let Z1 equal R1 times cos theta 1 plus I sine theta 1. And similarly, we can let z2 equal to r2 cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. Right, and so these are just two different complex numbers. Okay, and first of all, we would like to have a look at z1 times z2. So that's going to be equal to r1 cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times r2 into cos theta 2 cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. Okay, now let's move this r2 out the front, r1, r2, and let's expand these brackets here. So I'm sure you all know how to expand these brackets, so I won't spend too long on it. I'm going to have cos theta 1, cos theta 2, plus i cos theta 1 sine theta 2, plus i sine theta 1 cos theta 2 and we're going to have i squared here which will be a minus 1 so minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 okay so I went through that fairly quickly but I'm sure you know how to do that so let's now collect the real and imaginary parts inside these brackets so we still have our r1 r2 out the front so the real part are all the parts without i and again, I'll just go through that a bit quick. Minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Plus i times cos theta 1, sine theta 2. Plus i, not i, we've already got the i out the front. Plus sine theta 1, cos theta 2. All right. Now, we need to try and find a way to simplify these two, these two uh, parts here, the real part and the imaginary part. So you should remember back to your three unit trigonometry uh, where we looked at the complex, not the complex, the expansions of cos a plus b and sine of a plus b, right? So what was the expansion of cos a plus b? Well, that was cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And what about sine of a plus b? Well, that was cos a sine b plus sine a cos b. Right? So these are the two values. Now we look up here and we recognize that this is the expansion of cos theta 1 plus theta 2. And so we have z1 times z2 equals r1, r2 times cos theta1 plus theta2 plus i times, and this one here is the expansion of sine theta1 plus theta2. So we have sine theta1 plus theta2, right? And that's the end of the proof. That's the identity we wanted to show. Okay, now before I go on and have a look at the second identity, there's a few things we should note from this. If we have a look at the complex number here, let's have a look at the modulus of the complex number. So Z1, Z2, and we have a look at the modulus. Well, since this is in mod arg form, it's just the coefficient of this cos plus i sine. So the modulus is R1, R2. 
But what's R1 and R2? R1, if we look back up here, that's the modulus of Z1. And similarly, R2 is the modulus of Z2. And so we have that the modulus of Z1, Z2 is equal to the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2. Right? And we can, of course, generalize this statement to n complex numbers. And we get something like this. Zn equals the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2 up to the modulus of Zn. And I recommend you try to prove this by induction to yourself. It's a good exercise in uh, inductive procedures, proving things by induction. Okay, so we've looked at the modulus. Now let's have a look at the argument. So arg of Z1, Z2. Okay, well, what's that? Since this is in mod arg form, it's just the angle of these cos, uh, cos and sine. So that's equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. But once again, what's theta 1 and theta 2? Theta 1 is the argument of Z1, and theta 2 is the argument of Z2. And so we have that the argument of Z1, Z2 is equal to argument of Z1 plus arg of Z2. And once again, we can generalize this. We're going to have arg of Z1, Z2, all the way up to n complex numbers Zn. It's going to be the sum of the individual arguments. And once again, you can prove this by induction, and I recommend you try it. Now, it's important to note that this argument, when we add up all these separate arguments, it might not lie within our principal argument range, but that's fine because we can add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi to it in order to get it back to uh, our principal range of, remember, principal range was minus pi is less than, theta is less than or equal to pi, right? So we can add or subtract multiples of 2 pi to get it back into this form. Okay, let's have a look at the second formula, which was the quotients. Okay, so we have a complex number Z1 divided by Z2. All right, what's that equal to? Z1 is R1 cos theta 1 plus I sine theta 1 divided by R2 cos theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. Okay. Now, we have a complex number in the new, uh, denominator of a fraction, and so we want to realize this. So remember, the process of realizing was multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, we can take out this R1, R2 here and leave it to the side for a moment. Now, we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So we're going to multiply this by the conjugate of the denominator, which is cos theta 2 minus i sine theta 2. And here we're going to get cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 times its conjugate. Whoops, not minus. Not plus, it should be a minus sine theta 2. Okay, now we can expand the top if you get your R1, R2. Okay, if we expand the top here, what are we going to get? We're going to get cos theta 1, cos theta 2, uh, minus I cos theta 1, sine theta 2. What else? We're going to get plus I sine theta 1, cos theta 2, and then we're going to get minus i squared, which is a plus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Alright, and all this divided by what? Well, here we have a complex number times by its conjugate, 
And if you remember back to a video or two ago, when we have a complex number times its conjugate, that becomes a sum of squares. So if it wasn't complex numbers, we'd have difference of squares, but because it's complex numbers, we have a sum of squares. So we're going to have cos theta 2 all squared plus sine theta 2 squared. So we're going to have cos squared, cos theta 2 squared plus sine theta 2 squared. Right. Now, let's group the real and imaginary parts together in the numerator. That's going to be cos theta 1. So that'll be cos theta 1 cos theta 2 plus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 plus i times. Now here we have sine theta 1 cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 sine theta 2 all over cos squared theta 2 plus sine squared theta 2 but cos squared of any angle plus sine squared of that same angle well that's just equal to 1 that's our trig identity right so that's equal to 1 and now we can recognize this here, as in a similar fashion to the products, this now becomes a difference. So this is cos of theta 1 minus theta 2. Right? And here we have plus i times sine of theta 1 minus theta 2 as well. Right? And so therefore we have the quotient of the two complex numbers is the quotient of their moduli and the arguments are subtracted. And that is the end of the proof for this formula. So I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe for future videos.